They say uh, a change is as good as a break. Well, I had a break, so it was a change. Like usually, my uh, videos run an hour, sometimes. But when it happens, sometimes YouTube or the hacker that's interfering with my shit, I uh, it doesn't go through and it says your video is too long. So I don't want any of that to happen to this video, okay? So we got breaks and that's the excuse I'm giving to it. The real reason was I accidentally stepped on the keyboard and it stopped. That was the real reason. Now we got 39 minutes and I explained myself. I didn't waste no time because I want to get all the stuff done. First off, Revenue Canada, this is for you. This whole video, well, part two especially, I want you to know that uh, I owe you guys a fucking ton of money because, well, I'm a millionaire that's been screwed over and sooner or later I'm going to get back and then you get some of that money back. Sure, right? Got that? But <laughs> that's down the road. But I want you to know that uh, I have entrenched, Revenue Canada, I have entrenched in the elections this story of the corruption that exists in the medicine hat judicial system in relation to the false probation and the fraud constructed which may have been perpetrated by the city of medicine hat under the direction of ted grimm Is that a lot okay First off, Harry Viner made up a will on my mom's birthday, 1980. That will gave express instructions for anything in his will and for three months it was only accessible by my foster parents. And the proof is in the pudding. Now, I remember that they were so worried about that clause that they went and made my aunt sign over $5,000 that she had been saving because she was my trustee when I got put in mares. Okay? Now, my aunt didn't trust her. My aunt really didn't trust her. And be bottled you day but anyways she ended up signing it over and then there was no discrepancy about who was my trustee right because mayor's got everything they got my money they got whatever right so they're my trustee part five of that will states that anything for my benefit their signature was sufficient you know their signature was sufficient when they got the two, two section of uh, when they got the two sections of land in Schuler that the, at that 974 Street Southeast was originally constructed on. That's right, 974 Street. Yep. That's another thing that was stolen, and we'll get to that. Don't worry. I, I intend to to let you know on everything on every count. Okay. Now. When I squatted, I squatted right in front of 974 Street. Believe that or not, that was why the cops said, we have to get him out of here. And you know what the cops even said? They said, check to make sure there's no stones piled up. Why would the cops care if I piled up stones? Except it's Jewish tradition when you clear a property. And why would they know that? Because they knew I was Jewish. Me, I didn't know I was Jewish until that day too. Well, that's not quite true. But it was it was like... Like when I was born, I was born Canadian, a Jew, uh, Scottish Canadian, yeah. 
from the tribe of Cragnor, I believe it was, but that's my mom's side. My dad's side was always been a mystery. And I used to swear that when I find out who my dad is, I'm going to punch him out. Well, I'll tell you what, if I went to punch out Harry Viner, even in his latest stage, he would have kicked my ass. That's why when the cops come to get me, they bring everybody because they know my father that was there before me. Now, I don't want to be that tough guy that I had to be to survive. I ain't that person no more. I am a weak, frail old man. But this weak, frail old man's got one thing going for it. He's got the spirit and the protection of God Almighty. Now you can you can you can go to the graveyard and you can find out that the people that didn't believe that. Um, I don't know how many police chiefs didn't believe that. I know two of them that are dead. There's Don Kylo and the one after him that had the brain aneurysm. Now. Why would God kill the police chief? Well, when he's when he's going about malicious prosecution or trying to pervert the law, try to get rid of me, try to tell me to get out of town, try to run me out on a rail. Well, I'll tell you who's run out on a rail, and his was in a fine box, and it was about nine feet under. But you know, but that's not the point. So, anyways, Revenue Canada. I have entrenched in at least four elections. I have went and I have registered to vote. And then I have, when it was come time to actually vote, I said, I'm sorry, but you have failed to provide me a fair election considering the crimes committed against my father and against me which is a charter action which is basically they denied my religious beliefs or they first of all they denied my father's religious beliefs I didn't know what they were at the time but they're denying them now because they denied them then got it got it okay now this is entrenched so, what I'm saying is, I explained in those letters filed in that uh, election, I said they failed to provide me a fair election because of all the corruption that has put me where I am. And these people, that was basically, uh, would be Jack Austin appointed to the Senate 1975 by Pierre Elliott Trudeau. Now that man, he's my brother-in-law. Can you believe that? I don't know. Do you have many brother-in-laws that you like? There's probably a few out there. Well, this guy was married to the daughter that stopped making payments on dad's property, which kept together all his lifetime interests which were the rules the city had to follow. follow, okay? But if they were following dad's rules, they would have acknowledged me. So by, by failing to pay the bills for the taxes, and like, I got a question. What's the chances of a man who owned the co-op and the co-op owned the credit union bank. Now, do you think that those guys couldn't afford the payments when the when the rules about everything that dad had revolved around the payments they weren't making? So that's like, uh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you say or what you do. You know it's wrong. And why? Why would they stop payments? Because right away the city has does not have to follow the rules no more. And the city can steal everything connected to that property. You know? And then you can go and make up a conscious hill, 
that were placed the will that explained that it was all wrong. And that's what they did. And what do you do about the, to, to the original person that was entitled to all this stuff? Throw them in jail. Get rid of them. You know? How about seven years? Seven years, they could do everything, right? 1980, 1988 and seven years, that's 1995. 1995. That's an interesting year. Let's see. What happened in 1985? 1995, I mean. Well, first off, I got hurt. I got pulled apart by a winch line. Yeah, it was bad. And then what happened? Oh, yeah. Then we bought a house, June 1st, 1995. And guess what happened nine days later? Well, I'm sure history would say that was the year that nobody was paying attention to the... How full the dam was. Old man dam. How full it was. Because it got too full, they had to open the floodgates, and they just destroyed everything in its path. But the problem with that scenario is that when the crest waters, the highest point of that flood, was supposed to hit Medicine Hat, it was like 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, something like that, right, right, right? Well, the flood started happening at just after dinner, 12 o'clock. Now, how in the world does a flood that hasn't come yet already cause damage? They actually had to shut the car washers down. Why would the car washers affect flooding? Oh, you know what I hate that I got my teeth in? Because if I, I might just shoot them out, right? Because the police knocked my original ones out, and eventually they will have to pay, because I'm going down to Mexico, and I'm getting them redone. I want them attached. I don't want that no more. You know? See, I'm, you know, I wouldn't even have had him in tonight, but I shaved, and I look like a fucking old man, a goofy old man. And I'm not a, well, I maybe I am a goofy old man, but I don't want to look like one. Now, do you ever read uh, All Hells for Basement? Uh, Peter Goulet, 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 whatever. Try chapter 15, Mare with a Flare. That was my dad. Do you know what else my dad did? He played for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Yoo-hoo! Wasn't a really a skilled player, but the coach used to say, that man never gives up. That man may not be technically sufficient, but boy, does he have heart. So, you can understand me being at this situation, challenging the shit that Medicine Hat pulled off and portrayed as legal actions. They weren't legal actions. They were corrupt. Just like the flood of 95. Corrupt. That's right. That flood was corrupt. And if you really want to believe their original statement, that the flood was happening because nobody was paying attention, well then you don't go read the stuff that helped legislate the 1996 Waters Act. Because if you look in that, it'll tell you exactly at the time nobody was paying attention, they were, they were, they were documenting the whole system so they could make that act. So in other words, they knew it was overflowing, and they did nothing. That's like, that's almost exactly the same as what Medicine Hat did when my sister, who was married to the guy that threw Dad's will out, where, in a courtroom? Yeah. Well, yeah, in a courtroom. In a separate courtroom? No. Because we got Jack Austin saying that Harry Viner is a senile old man and, uh, no. 
he, he, he said that um, that will of Harry Viner's is the senile wishes of a crazy old man. Well, if Dad was crazy, that shouldn't be a reason to throw out his will. And if you say that it was non-existent, the, the, the error wasn't there, then why the hell would you throw his would you throw his will out at his son's trial? That's right. According to uh, everybody, I was a badass. And you know what? With badasses, better no ass, but badasses, it's okay to screw them over, right? It's okay that they don't get what they deserve. It's okay. They're second class people. Well, then why in the world did I was I found not guilty? Why in the world was the actual crime two people, witnesses seen it, and now they want to charge three, right? Then um, they have a hair sample. One guy's already pled guilty. They got a hair sample that doesn't match him. That's the other person, right? 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 Oh, sure. But no. I remember Darwin Green say, I don't care if your hair sample doesn't match his. The guy that did it, I'm getting you. No, actually he said, I don't care if that hair sample matches my pet poodle. I'm going to get you. Well, you might have known my place I had one time. It was called the Wholesome Road. Well, it was on the Wholesome Road. It wasn't called the Wholesome Road. It was called the Red Light Inn. It was a party house that was hearty. It was a good time. And it was outside of town. It didn't cause any problems inside town, right? The fact we're selling after our booze, supplementing our income, you know, that was maybe, maybe iffy. But if I would have been a billionaire like I was supposed to be, I wouldn't have needed to do that new extra income. No, yeah. But, you see, the problem was that people would start to lack me. They would start, you know, you don't want to have somebody that's getting screwed over for a billion dollars. You don't want people liking them because somebody might tell them who his dad is. It's just kind of funny that the guy that told me who what was going on was the son of the biggest backstabbing prick I've ever seen. That's right. You want to know something? When I was at Mira's foster home, they were, uh, apparently, they were setting up to give me this farm, right? If you go into my Departments of Veterans, uh, a DVA, Department of Veterans Association or whatever, uh, they had a, I had a worker there too, because because for some reason, I got a DVA check every month, probably some dad set up, right? Well, he didn't, he didn't take money for being a mayor, he didn't do that, you know, so I could understand, he sure didn't take a, a, a veteran's allowance, even though he served in, uh, well, he snuck into World War One when he's 14 or 12, and then he uh, ran the POW camp in Medicine Hat, which concentrated on a Mossad uh, espionage, you know what I mean? It's behind the scenes, you know, knowing what's going on, like they're watching us right now. But, anyways, all that stuff helped in one area. It helped to establish Israel's home. And that's what Dad was going for. Dad, that's what he was going for when he was 12, when he found out that he was part of that line. You see, something about our family line, the viners of the vine, they, uh, they go, they go from father, now this, their fathers, the fathers don't die, until the son is born. Because that's the way God had planned it. That's the perfect plan. Down, 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 down. That's right. So that means that uh, Harry Viner was basically bulletproof till he had me. And that's the reason 
that if my end destination as the Davidic covenant promise that was made to King David by God when when King David asks, will my kingdom last forever? And he goes, no, it's going to end at King Solomon. Because she's going to fall for a witch. And uh, penny, many, what? The writing's on the wall, in other words. So, so that, but God also said, in the last days, you know, when uh, the evil gets to the point where they don't believe in democracy, they don't believe in the honesty, they don't believe in anything about except corruption. And that's exactly what is happening here. I ran for mayor 20 years ago. 21 years ago, I ran for mayor. And I said, if I'm Harry Viner's son, which I am, that means the last 20 years is corruption. Oh yeah, ha ha ha. Oh, you're crazy, kid. You're crazy. I'm not. It's corruption. And it's not 20 years. It's 40 years because that was 21 years ago. But I'm not giving up until, if, even if it takes me yelling and screaming till May 9, 2025, God comes in and puts me on that throne. And then you want to say no? Then it's 800,000. Oh, 800,000. Eight. I want 40 bill, no, $400 billion. $400 billion. I want that now. I won't get it tomorrow. I won't get it next day. That's fine. But I want it. And if you haven't done it by May 9th, 2025, it's going to be $800,000 and the ownership of Canada. Wow! And the ownership of Canada! You know, I want to get rid of my teeth because I can really talk without them. And I tell you what, I don't care. That's enough of that shit. I get to myself to make some money. So, I think it this way. That's right, $400 billion. That's because you stole the billion dollars worth of shit 40, ye or 40 years ago. Yeah, a billion dollars, 40 years of interest. Oh, we start compounding doubly? Well, yeah, that's what it is, boys. But you know what I'm going to do with that money? I want everybody in Canada to send me your debt. That's right. I will cover it. Because the corruption that exists, that God is here now, that's part of it. That's part of it. So let's kick that shit in the ass. You send me your debt. Right? You believe that what's happening now isn't legit you the the carbon tax every friggin thing that's bullshit you send me your debt I'll take it now what good's that Jerry well how about this it's like in a Super Bowl mortgage right you send me your debt you're debt free Right? I am fucked up, right? Or, well, I've been fucked up before. Forty years of fucked up. You send me your debt, Canada. Send it everything. I don't care. COVID, well, especially COVID. Because the debt will go against B. So when you, and it would, if you haven't filled out your income tax, send it before, right? Then, then, they don't agree with you, challenge it. Make sure you get the court. And, and get that entrenched every friggin' time it happens. Entrench it. Because when I do prove myself, then that'll just reverse, right? Anything that they've said, no, that can't be legit, it'll reverse. Believe me, it'll be reversed. Just like when uh, Marge McLeod, I was talking about her earlier, that witch, 
She was part of, she was my actual, she was my actual social worker that was looking after me or assigned to me besides the DBA, right? So I was put in Mayor's foster home, right? Uh, March 1977, and I didn't leave there till February 17th, 1981. For two years, I got the living shit beat out of me. I remember, oh, I don't remember, is they said I was whining in my sleep, so I'd get a licking for that. And if I was, I was. But did I know it? No. Could I change it? I don't know. I'm not even sure if I did. Or, but she said she heard me whimpering. Oh, 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 oh. Well, fuck that shit. You know, that place was horrible. It fucked me up, right? It did fuck me up. Like, when I left Mayors, I was so petrified of those people. I was a growing man. And I turned out to be a fairly tough fucking man. But I was petrified of these people. The Knights of Columbus had this van that looked like theirs. And every time that thing drove away, I scoured for some protection. I went and I hid. Now, how in the hell would that fucking do that if it wasn't wrong? Now, I guess I shouldn't get that mad, right? I shouldn't. Oh, hell, it's only... It's only a billion dollars, you, you know, you live, you eat out of garbage cans, uh, you know, you, you, you go through a winter that you have no place to live, but you got a person that lets you stay there with the coldest or the latest part of the night, but you got to wait till a certain time to go sneak in. So what you do when you're waiting, you walk around, right? You walk around, you don't have that warm of clothes because you really don't have nothing. You are basically nondescript you have no nothing uh you know and i remember i remember walking around city hall they got these exhaust furnaces that come out and it's warm if you're freezing cold you go there you're warm until you warm up and then you realize how cold it is right so you can only stay there till you're warm and then quickly go walking and walk around the block at 40 below in the weather, okay? So you're walking around, and when you get really cold, you can go back and warm up. But, you can't stay too long because you get cold again, you know? But, and then you do that till it's the time when you can go sneak in so you have a place to sleep, right? You see, the problem with that is people die. Mark died right in the library because he got kicked out of the shelter because uh, he's drinking, right? So he just goes and he buys a, a, a Mickey and he drinks at the library because that was the place that they would go in the morning to warm up, right? So he falls asleep under alcohol and, you know, influence and he freezes to death. And it's, uh, part of that, part of that's kind of funny. Well, not funny. Nothing about death is funny. That guy was a good guy. His daughter, the minister of the, uh, his daughter is a minister at the place where I was baptized. Yeah. And the thing that's so fucked up about that is when I had my outreach program, it was called Blessings, and it was a, a Ford Astro van, and it was a taxi cab that I said was God's taxi. So if you had to go from the food bank and you had all that food, you phoned me. And whatever you had, whatever you could spare, that was my payment. I didn't ask for an arm or a leg, cash, gas, or ass, none of that. And I did that, right? I, I did that because I believe that you, the Bible states you have to learn to serve before you can leave. Now, I'm coming back now, and I'm saying I'm ready to lead. But the first thing I'm going to lead, you send me your debt. Right? Canada, send me your debt. You can send it to the Viner Center, care of 
the city of Medicine Hat with, and this is very important, you have to state that we know you stole the property and the Kaja sale was a forged document. Simple, right? Then you send it to the city. You can send it to the city of Medicine Hat. But I would like it if you send it to the Viner Center, care of the city of Medicine Hat, right? We know the Codger sale was a forged document. You know who forged it? William Anhorn. He had to do the intricacies of covering up the truth and still be able to collect the money that was coming already when they threw the will, will out. Okay? Or not. They threw it out then before they took over that property and gained ownership because dad had it in lifetime interest everything the city got the city owns that they say was donated by my father is a fucking lie a fucking lie you know the dad had all these rules like he even said when like when they built the Esplanade he had a thing set up that it was going to be built down by uh, uh, his his the Delta Potteries, right? They have all these antiques and stuff like this, and he they were supposed to charge money there, and that then that was supposed to build the Empanade. It, it was it was probably a a very structural plan that would have worked because basically everything he touched worked, everything he did worked because you know what? God blessed him. The same way he protects me, he blessed Dad, right? Now, I don't know why I'm so upset today. I just like, I just, you know, I thought that when I figured out what's going on and people realized it was the truth, that it was some change. But there's no change because this town is full of friggin' thieves. Actually, very godly called them Masons and Thieves. Because he told me what Marge McLeod did. You see, besides that contact note that he had uh, basically uh, explained who wrote it, he told me that Marge McLeod also was part of the official cover-up that hid the illegal acts and the child abuse that happened at Mayor's foster home. And I mean when they start to beat kids. Beat them. Don't spare the rod, spoil a child. I wasn't spoiled. Never spoiled. Nope. I, I wasn't spared the rod either. Wasn't even a hot rod. It was a rod. Like, uh, and, and you know what? If I would have just been, thing is, if they would have just beat me, that would have been okay. But when they put me in charge of the other kids and made me beat them, that caused me inner conflict. And back to the Church of Nazarene, 16, I accepted Jesus, right? And I believed that I, and I felt it. I felt it in, you know, I felt it. And, uh, but then, now, I on Sunday, I just go there, yeah, 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 I love God, yeah, 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 I love God. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 4th, I was a bastard to those kids, because I had to be. Like, who in the right mind tells a 8-year-old girl they have to do 500 push-ups? 500 push-ups! And you know what? Out of 500 push-ups, you get 5 breaks. One at every 100. And that was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Another 100. And I can tell you right now that no matter how friggin' good you are or how in shape you are, at 400, or actually 350 was the usual marker, you just want to give up. So what do you got? You got a piece of hose about that long. It's rubber. It comes off the sheath and when uh, Wilk Mayor wired in the the lamp out on the property, you know, the, those uh, 
look like street lights, right? So he got this hose because we're supposed to hit her with this hose because if we punch her, they get she gets bruises. And there was too many complaints about her at school being bruised up, like she was being abused. You know, that probably would have done something, except our foster parents was on school division four. So he just nipped him right in the butt. Well, that's just crazy. They're just... Or, or how about the guy that really profited from keeping his mouth shut was my guidance counselor from Seven Person, Wally Regeer. That's why I kind of look at when you, at the, the name played on uh, Pritchard and Lerner at the time was uh, Malcolm F. Pritchard, Janice M. Pritchard, William J. Anhorn, he's the one that uh, forged the Codges Hill, Michael J. Dolan, Dolan Catherine A. Rieger, Rieger, Rieger. I wonder, Catherine, are you related? And then Les S. Shawley. Don't know who that guy is. Now, there's a few names missing, of course, because they got to separate all the shit so nobody catches it together. Like, Stanley Lerner's not on there, and neither is uh, Jim Pritchard Sr. Now, William Anhorn not only wrote up the Codgers Hill, he was the one that uh, was supposed to represent me at that phony armed robbery trial. You know the one, oh, I haven't told you? I think I did. I think it's another one. I don't know. Maybe not. But anyways, he's my lawyer. And you know, when I seen him represent other people, he was a good lawyer. Except me. He didn't represent me good. It was almost like he was feeding me to the wolves. Like, I was just, is there some stipulation that says legal aid don't get paid unless the lawyer gives it to the plaintiff dry? But anyway, so, you see, like, when I first got arrested, the whole jail was told that I got arrested cashing a Crime Stoppers check after I ratted out my co accused now tell me how in the world that even makes sense. Now I could see them saying I ratted out these guys and they arrested, well then no reason to arrest me, but then uh, he was ratting them out to get pay, you know, I could see that. I could, I could see at least it would make sense. This sounds more like, you know, you want me in jail but you'll settle if there's somebody shanks me. And I'll tell you right now, if I am the promise God made to David, I'm bulletproof. I can't die as a man because I have a destiny as a king. And that would explain why I'm still here. Yeah, yeah. I believe that, uh, well, it's either it's either God stopping their heart, let's say the, the guy that's taking the shot, you know, the sniper. You know, that would be the easiest way, because they could just walk outside, boop, done, problem over, mouthpiece shot, you know, no problem. Actually, not a teeth piece, but a mouthpiece. So, anyways, and that's 38 minutes, oh boy, I'm... I gotta rush along if I want to make this under an hour. But can you imagine my when I start to preach? Woo, 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 praise the Lord. For we know that in all things God is working for good to them that love God and them that are called according to His purpose. Now, that sounds a lot like the reason why God loved King David. Because he was the ultimate king that gave God the glory. You know, he was an asshole at times, yeah. And he's, he had a little bit of a libido problem, you know. And like that time that uh, that chick was uh, mens finished her menstruating period and took the bath and the king will, woohoo, I want that. Then he t goes and gets his soldiers to take her husband out, you know, make sure he's close to the war. You know? Or take him out in an army. Take him out with the army when you go to fight, right? Maybe at the beginning, 
he uh he never got put close to the fighting. It was when that guy kept coming back to see his wife that the King David decided that he had to get rid of him. And rather than kill him, he'll just put him next to the to uh, where the conflict is the heaviest. Be like putting me in the jail, getting everybody in the jail to think I'm a rat and then have them eliminate me? That's pretty much the same thing, right? Right? Both wrong, but that's pretty well. Now, so, yeah, I remember, I remember that time in jail, that eight months of dead time I did. I remember that. I remember, the first thing I remember is walking in the yard, right? Now, you got, you got, you got to understand what a yard is, right? It's like, a cement enclosure with a screen on top of it so you're stuck in it, right? And you about the size, three quarters the size or half the size of a basketball court, right? And you just walk around and around. And you take your toothbrush and you drag it as you walk. So it, the friction starts to eat down at the toothbrush and then you turn it over and eat down that side and you turn it over and you eat down that side and you turn it over and pretty soon you got this toothbrush that would uh well let me say if you were getting an enema with that toothbrush it would hurt well you could get stuck in the side it would hurt and so i figured if they're coming after me and it won't be one-on-one -on -one, because one-on-one, -on -one, one a problem. It was the 12-on-one -on -one or whatever. But I tell you, I'd have got half of them. And that life, that life there, that was pretty rough. That was really rough until Robbie Anderson came in. Now, a lot of people got a lot of bad things to say about him when he was alive. But I'll tell you something. I was sure, I was sure thankful that God sent him then, there, now. About, you know, then. Like... He comes up, right? He goes, I hear this, that uh, everybody says you're a rat. Oh, no. Well, then how about you tell me and I'll, I'll decide whether I believe you or not. I know when people are lying, he says. Well, I told him. And then he makes this announcement to the rest of the rematch. You guys want to fight him? It's one-on-one. -on -one. If not, I'm going after who jumps in. And besides, you know, Robbie had a few quirks at jail. Like, it was nothing for him to stand up behind somebody and drop his cock in their ear, right? He was always doing that. He, was, he, got, he got sort of turned around his first few times in the pen, the squealing and all that shit. But he ended up liking the guys. Well, that's okay. And I'll tell you what, that guy was my friend. That guy had my back. I don't care who he was or what he was. He did me a solid. Because nobody wanted... To, he was crazy. Nobody wanted to fuck with him. So, from that point... From that point on in the jail, I was okay because he wasn't fighting my battles for me. He was just making sure they were fair. And any fair fight I've ever been in, I've always walked away after they were laying out. I remember one time I was fighting this oh fuck he was GP real guy. Oh big god he was big. I was loaded on acid then too. You know what? I've done a lot of things on acid. Isn't that strange? You know the only reason I say this I don't know if you know anything about me but when when my dad gave me his blessing I was loaded on acid. Probably from all the shit that I went through at, and you know what? The guy that sold me that ass at that time, he is one of my favorite people now who has been turned around and he spreads the word of God and he is something special. But back then he sold some acid. I think he was working at the subway or the, it was it wasn't the actual subway subway. It was like what we had in Medicine Hat before that was something. But uh, Jeff, I love you, man. You're 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 faith in God. You're 
is so beautiful. Like, Medicine Hat is a little lost out because I will say that there is probably not more, well, I'd say more than three, but, you know, truthfully, there's probably a hundred or so people in Medicine Hat that are actually sanctified. All the rest, they could never handle meeting God. They'd die. Be just like the days of old when the priests would put the rope on themselves. Because if they had any evil, just like, anybody comes after me with the evil intent, their heart stops. And Don Kylo is proof of that. A lot more. I bet you more people have actually died from the Viner curse than COVID will ever kill. Keith Lynn's another one. Yeah, when I told him that he didn't own that he was the manager of the Royal, oh, he got mad. That man got red like the, I don't know, tomato. I don't know, uh, when you steal the last uh, something your wife likes, I don't know, and she freaks out, you know, that's that kind of way. That kind of red. But anyway, I tell him that I got proof, blah, blah, blah. You know what? I don't know if he believed me or not, but he sold the royal. It was Monday I told him. He sold it on Wednesday. And you know what? My dad broke his back when he was 55 by being thrown from a horse. And a year later, he ended up... Um riding the same horse that threw him into his bar and had a drink. My dad did a lot of shit. He was good. He did a lot of good shit. I don't know why you would say that it was a senile wishes of a crazy old man and then, then get rid of the will at that kid's trial hoping to put him away at the same time so you don't have to deal with your shit? Or, or, or why he, he was doing eight months dead time just so you could get all your P's and, or's, P's and Q's in order just to throw at the wheel. So that proves that everything to do with that decision bes that Don McLean did is corruption. Action of corruption. Acts of corruption. That means that Oh, yeah, what else did Don McLean do? Let's ask ourselves that. Well, first off, the, the, the guardian that signed on part five, the Godfish land in Schuler that matches the house came off of the day of my birth, that, uh, that was signed by Alice or Wiltmere. They were both my guardians, so either one could sign. And, uh, Eagle's Nest Ranch came same way. I want that back too, but I'm not asking for that right now. That's more of a, you know, the 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 icings, you know, the dessert. I want the bread and butter now. I want the Viner Center. I want 974 Street Southeast, and I want the shelter, the one that uh, the women's shelter that was sold to Sally Ann for a dollar. I want that. Because I want to take over looking after what the city turns their nose at. I want to look after and help people. Just like my father did. And I want to make a difference the same way. And then only thing going for me is I got God's blessing. And if you want to experience that, then bless me. Send me your debt. Care of Viner Center. Well, to the Viner Center, care of Me City of Medicine Hat. We know that the shit you did is wrong or something like that. No, I, I said it in the first one. How about... Uh, Put down, attention medicine hat, we know you stole the Viner property. 
We know you're corrupt. We know you're assholes. Well, I don't say that because I'll probably throw that out and it won't be no good. But I want, I want three quarters of Canada to give me their debt because then we'll make a law out of it. And we'll, you know what? And when it comes right down to it, I've got a plan to, to knock out the, the notwithstanding clause when I go after them under religious discrimination. When they told my father he was a crazy old man with senile wishes, they were, they were laughing at the fact that he believed that this was the fulfillment of God in the Davidic covenant. That's a mouthful. With no teeth, that's a mouthful. Okay, now, Revenue Canada. What I've said is true. What taxes you should have had, you should have had. But this is got to be stopped, right? First off, I want to read this. This is a reminder the program listed before has asked the Canada Revenue Agency to apply your tax refunds and certain tax credit against the debt you owe them. This is allowed under Section 164.2 of the Income Tax Act. Name of program, fines and enforcement. Name of department, Alberta Justice and Solicitor General. Jurisdiction, Alberta. For the information discussed payments rates, please contact the following representatives. Checks payable to the government of Alberta. Fuck you, government of Alberta. You guys concealed all the shit when uh, Don McLean threw out the charges against Wilson Ellis. You guys knew they were legit. That's why you guys sent and story lawyer uh, of and story law to come down and make sure that no matter what happens they don't find out that everything revolves around mayors and Dr. Death you know the treasure the Alberta treasure uh, that uh, you know, I'm blanking. I can't remember his name. But we used to pray for him every day. Because he was part of this when 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 they actually, you know, faked the flood and made it a fuck national disaster when really it was just Jewish lightning. You know, and that way when he privatized everything that was uh public like workers' compensation, that's probably why I, was, that I was screwed over first, right? I keep thinking day. In day, no. Um, oh, it's bugging me now. I can't think of it. I'll think of it just a minute I click it. But anyways, he's dead now. They're all dead. But there's going to be some left to serve jail time, like Pete Vanderham. You know what? When I was at Mayor's and I was getting that property... Wilf Mayor said to me, do you remember any of the guys around the first time you didn't sleep with your mom? Like a very specific question. Why would he ask me that question? I was actually creeped out. But I remember, you know, I said, no, I don't remember. You know, I, I like I'm getting beat every day and I, uh, if I didn't remember, I didn't know, you know, whatever. But for some reason, but he asked me that. And you know what? It wasn't until about Two months ago, I did a hit of acid thinking of if I could make, because you know what? If you lose your car keys when you're drunk, and you can't find them when you're sober, but you get drunk and you all of a sudden remember where they are, that's because that's the state your mind is in. So if you want to remember something and your mind is in that state, it's a lot easier than being drunk and hide them, sober and can't find them. But, so I, 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 I know when... Acid and memory, they go together, man. They go together. They used acid in high doses to uh, stimulate those memory things and boom, right? So it's like, it's like a computer with two types of files. The one can't read the other because they're different, but you, you turn them to the same, like, like your dominators when you're doing math, making sure all your 
Denominator to the bottom? Okay. Numerator, top, down. I think that's right. Well, you got to make them all the same at the bottom so that they can go together. Like, you know, like you can't do halves and fourths. Like, you know, you got to make uh, the fourths the same as the halves, which take half off, whatever, you know. You know what I mean. But, so these two files that don't match, I do acid when, and that's videos on here. That's, it's not here, but it's on YouTube under Jerry Viner at Gmail. Go to YouTube, watch that video. And if you tell me if that don't make sense, I'm loaded on acid, and yet it makes sense. Or maybe you'll see Dad and me coming through. I don't know. But I tell you, when I look at it, I just like, holy mount of roly. I'm loaded, but I'm making sense. Like, how does anybody on acid ever make sense? Unless it's ordained by God? My throat's getting sore. I don't want to talk no more, but I still have some things to tell you. First off, I want to start with, because when you stole the oil and gas rights out of that property when you confiscated it, because she stopped, my sister, stopped making payments because a billion dollars worth of stuff and she wasn't getting a cent. It's greed. It had nothing to do. The city, everything, even Jack Austin's friggin' brother it was an ambassador in China. And we all know China's got some shit happening with Canada that nobody knows about. Well, it all revolves around that shit. Or Stern Brother Law. Like, I always thought that just because of those shitheads down there, and that and they pay directly to the World Bank, and all the stipulation, the COVID money comes, it's all tied together. So send me your debt, let me fuck with these guys, and start debt free. But remember, send a copy to Medicine Hat Screwed Harry Viner at gmail.com and a copy to the city of Medicine Hat. We know you guys stole the Viner Center. I want three quarters of Canada to do that. I want their place just covered in mail. You know what? Pray about it. See what God says. That's always the way to do it. That's the same thing as all these churches in Madison Hat that are built on stolen property because they, with the, when they grabbed the property, they, they started dividing it up. Well, we'll do the spoils. Yeah, you get this, you get this. Just don't say nothing, right? Well, that might work. But you can't have a church that was built in that situation because the Spirit will tell you. And the only way to lose your salvation is to deny the Spirit. I love God and God, my God, the Jewish God, the God of the Jews, the real God, the one that sent his son for everybody. Well, it wasn't for everybody when he first sent them. But since the Jews were being stupid, don't get me wrong, we make mistakes. We never admit making the mistakes, but we do. That's why we do so much stuff in secret. That's why they, you know, it's like the Gurkhas. Come in the middle of the night, cut the shoelaces, and leave. And then everybody wakes up, they're all shoelaces are cut, and they go, they get it. Or they'll just go in there and fucking cut everybody's throat, leave one guy alive, he wakes up, everybody else dead. Wonders, why did they leave me? As a witness. You don't fuck with the Gurkhas and you don't screw with the Jews. And you know what? If you don't like my tongue, then fix my compensation. Because that part of me is here until that's fixed. My accident happened February 5th, 1995. February 5th, 1995. Not, like, uh, and then, get this, the guy that did the actual stealing, or the,
confiscating or repossessing because the bill wasn't paid, because they did that they conspired, which is illegal. That whole thing was done to do this, and the guy that was the solicitor, Frank O'Connell, how come his wife is the friggin' doctor that has the accident three months before it happened? So that what they could say is, well, your accident was uh, November 30th, 1994, and you worked all the way up to February 5th when the accident actually happened, and because you worked there, you didn't get hurt. Or the fact that every medical never made it to WCB. You know, and then when I said the cops beat me up, I believe, uh... The guy that, uh, oh, I'm having trouble with shit tonight. The guy that uh, organized that little uh, beating party for me, you know, held the ambulance off, whatever. Like, it's on Vine, right? It's under Bastard Son, you know, talks about, it, that was the cover-up. The stuff I taped, that was the cover-up. Because it was supposed to be, you know, you're supposed to find out what's going on. But listen to it, you know, listen to what he's, you can tell He's got an agenda. An agenda, guys. An agenda. The same way that when 67 people get vaccinated, afterwards they do tests and uh, 65 of them are sterile. Whew. COVID. Certification of vaccination identification device and 19 functions. Filed by Gates under the mark of the beast. Or how the Rothschild main goal of the top two percent is to limit the is to drop the world's population by two thirds. This is the start. So if they vaccinate everybody I bet you that's uh, 144,000 dead, straight out of Revelation. And the prediction, May 9th, 2025, that's when the Son of Man breaks the seals. And guess what? That's the Davidic King. That'd be me. So, first off, I want the City of Medicine Hat, if you don't want to go bankrupt, I want $10,000 a month, I want the Viner Center, 940 uh, the house, and uh, 944 Street Southeast, and the shelter. And I want utilities for all of them, 10000 a month, utilities for all of them, and then I get to look after the homeless, I get to feed the hungry. And Canada, send me your debt so that you start out on level ground and you don't start paying for shit that will never get paid off because if you add debt and more debt and more debt, you get interest upon interest upon interest. I'm going to get $400 billion for the shit that they pulled or I'm going to get $800 billion if they wait and the ownership of Canada, and you won't have the debt anyways. And then when I'm done with that, I'm going after the World Bank and tell them to go fucking hoop it. Okay. Everybody got everything under control? You know what's going down? 104.09. Woohoo! We're done. We're done. It's Miller time! Woohoo!